Welcome to the Emporia Public Schools podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Allison Anderson Harder, Superintendent. This podcast is our way to provide students, staff, parents, and community members easy access to information on a variety of topics. Once you've listened to an episode, we encourage you to use the electronic link to provide feedback or ideas about the episode to which you just listened to, or to share ideas for future episodes. Today, I'm visiting with Mr. David Carlson, Director of Food Service. Welcome, David. Hi. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Good. Well, thank you for being here today. You bet. Well, talk to us a little bit about yourself and how you came to work for Emporia Public Schools. Okay. Well, I'm from Emporia originally, and I attended the Emporia Public Schools for my education. I graduated from Emporia State with a degree in business. I've worked in food service as a manager for most of my adult life, and for several years, I was a state of Kansas food safety inspector. How did I not know that you went to Emporia Public Schools? I don't know. How did we miss that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what was your elementary school? Well, I went to a variety. I started at Walnut for kindergarten, and then I went to uh, Whittier, which was still in existence back then, for first and second grade. And then I finished up at William Allen White. All right. Okay. Yeah. Where where was Whittier? I, I hate to say this, but I don't... I don't it's, even know that name. It's on the east side of town. Okay. It's where Abundant Harvest is now, I think. Oh. But yeah, it's an oh, older brick cool. building. Yeah. So I, I was there for two years. And back in those days, the classrooms were combined because it was such a small school. So first and second grade was in the same classroom. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So well, thank you. Thanks for sharing. And then you, you went, so middle school experience and yeah. high school, where were those at? Well, it was Lowther South and Lowther North for middle school. So okay. that's where I was for that. And then I started high school. I think it was its sixth year in existence. So it's still pretty new when I was out at the Emporia High. Okay, yeah. good. And, me, and a little smaller yeah. than what it is now. It's grown in every direction <laughs> since then. I have to I have to remind people so I'll say the new section but not, but it's not this new section. It was a previous new section. So right. just, yeah, it's, it's, I've been around a little bit too. So you got. And so talk to us a little bit about what's being, what's involved with being the director of food service. So you just started this position in May. That's correct. Back in May. So basically what I do is I coordinate the efforts of the nine different kitchens that we have in the district. I've got a great supporting cast of staff that help me out in the day-to-day -day operations. And we serve about 3,500 lunches and breakfasts a day, so we're, we're very busy. Uh, it's an exciting uh, position to be in, and I'm learning more every day. But like I said, I'm really fortunate to have an experienced staff that's helping me out and helping me learn the ropes as I go. Awesome. Well, and one of the things that's being improved with our construction through the bond has been the kitchens. And we've had some really, really tiny kitchens in the elementary schools, so those have been expanded. So right. that probably makes it easier to deliver the food and it certainly does it. and the staff that enjoys those kitchens definitely does it's it's a vast improvement over several of those uh, in particular Logan Avenue is a good example it was a really tiny kitchen and so was Village and both of those um, schools have been renovated and they look great it's a real pleasure for those folks to work in those now oh that's awesome um, talk to us a little bit about kitchen facilities. I mean, you're mainly at the high school. That's correct. And so talk to us a little bit about what does that look like and sure. how food is delivered to different different schools. Right. So we are basically the clearinghouse for all the food in the district. So all the food supplies, with the exception of milk, comes through the high school. So we take delivery of that. And we have the biggest freezer and the biggest storage capacity. So we, we kind of act as a smaller warehouse for the district where we get all of the um, deliveries in one location. And then we have two food delivery trucks that can get those out to the district kitchens. Well, and um, so we also have students that have special diets um, through their um, physician. Correct. And so parents have a form that they fill out. So how do you address those needs? Because... 3,500, 3,800 sure. meals a day. And in addition, you have some special meals for students that have some special dietary needs. Sure, we absolutely do. And we employ a registered dietitian that looks over those um, special diets to make sure that we're ensuring those kids get the proper meals. So what does that look like then? How are those meals made? Um, it really depends on the circumstance. Some of the diets, to give an example, would be gluten-free. So we make sure that we're using gluten-free products. Uh, those meals are prepared separately so there's no uh, possibility that we get anything mixed up they're purchased separately they're prepared separately any special instructions we get from the dietitian that we employ so we're, we're taking all the necessary steps to make sure that these kids get the food that they need awesome well thank you thank you I know that's a lot of extra work but it definitely it meets the needs of our students absolutely appreciate that 
So what is a typical day? We know that every day in schools is not necessarily typical, but what does that look like for food service staff members? Well, for food service staff, we start bright and early. We're there at six in the morning every day. And since the menu changes on a daily basis, every day is a little bit different than the other day. So there's a lot of variety in the course of our daily work, but we're involved with preparing food, um, cleaning the kitchens, serving the kids. Our staff really enjoys interacting with the kids in the district, so it's fun to watch that. And our staff takes a great deal of pride in what they do, so it's fun to experience that on a daily basis. Well, it's a well-oiled machine. Whenever I visit the kitchen at the high school, everyone is doing something. They're either preparing food, um, cutting up vegetables or whatever. I mean, they're just, they're always busy, but everybody knows what they're doing and they have a plan. Yeah, it's fun to watch. And we've got a lot of experience in these kitchens. There's, We've got staff members that have been with the district doing what they do for over 20 years. And that shows, and they take a lighter product in, in what they do. Yeah, awesome. Um, so how is food delivered to each of the schools in our district? Well, we, like I said earlier, we get the food in its raw form or unprepared form at the high school. And from there, it's uh, sent out to the kitchens. We have two full-time drivers and two trucks, so they, they split up their duties. So all that food is delivered to the separate schools based on what their lunch figures are. And then there's prepared in each of the school's kitchens. So that's what makes it really nice. We're not serving Uh, food that's been kept in a warmer for a while. All the food in our district is prepared in their own school's kitchen, which is great. Well, and years ago, that's what we used to do is that warmers, uh, they were loaded up on the food trucks and they were taken to all the different schools. And so they had been in warmers for a while. Right. So this is a big improvement over that. Good. Well, when I was out in your office um, some time ago, so I can't remember how many weeks ago, um, it was right before school started, you had a number of new staff members. And at that time you were hiring, I think you had almost all of the positions filled. So right. do you still have any positions available? And then what what would those positions be? Well, sure. Uh, we've been very fortunate in the amount of people we've been able to hire. I tell you, we're always looking for qualified people that are interested and take the best interest for the kids at heart. So we do have limited number right now, but I encourage people that are interested in working for food service with the Emporia School District to apply. And once we, you know, this is a business where things can change pretty rapidly. So if we do have a uh, position that becomes available, we'll have that application to look back on and bring them in for an interview. That'd be awesome. What are some perks just thinking about maybe days and hours? What would be something that maybe people might not realize about working? working for food service? Well, we are typically done by 2 or 2.30 in the afternoon. So that that leaves a lot of uh, regular business hours open to be able to make doctor's appointments and go about other uh, daily activities that you might enjoy. Also, we have the opportunity to have our summers off. So that's a big plus. So for people with kids at home, it might be the ideal job. While they're at school, you could be at work with us. Definite. And then we have, like you said, when we don't have students in school we also but then we also have times that we serve um, students sure so then there's opportunities that people wanted to make some extra money they could sign up for those days as well absolutely and it's worth pointing out that over the summer we're extremely busy I'm really proud of the fact that we served over 80,000 meals this past summer wow. counting breakfast and lunch so a lot of people may not be aware of that but we're super busy year-round yeah wow that's that is an incredible number that's awesome How do families apply for free and reduced meals? Probably the easiest way is to do it online through the district's website. If that's not an option for people, we encourage you to have a paper application filled out and you can get those that are available through us. You can just call our office and we'll arrange that for you. Well, and our board recently voted on to subsidize reduced meals. So families who qualify for reduced meals don't have to pay anything. So that would be another incentive for filling out that reduced meal form. Absolutely. And we encourage you to do that. How do you determine lunch and breakfast items, their menus? Well, we look at a lot of different factors. We try to um, provide variety for the kids, and we hope that we can increase participation by doing that. We keep pretty accurate numbers on what we serve, and we can look back on that and see what's most popular and try and plan our menus around that accordingly. We do that well in advance so that we can take advantage of Um, delivery schedules and um, making sure we get what we want ahead of time. And also we have those special diets that we need to be aware of so we can get that in as well. Well, this is a great time to highlight also um, those fresh vegetables and fruits. So talk a little bit about that. What's available at each school? Yeah, we try and offer a variety and keep that different on a, a daily basis. We'd like to have at every lunch at least three different options for uh, students to choose from. Uh, We do follow 
that as closely as we can. And right now is a great time. We've got some great produce options out there for lunch every day. So I've been asked this question, and I obviously don't know the answer to it. So the question had been about like the high school and the middle school and salad bars. Right. So that had been a really popular just option for the middle school and high school. So what's the status of that? We're still training some staff members right now. I'm hoping to have the salad bar open at the high school later this month in September. So we're really excited about that. We've increased our staffing level as well. So I'm hoping to get the bakery open at Timberman. So we've got some exciting things coming up in the future weeks. Awesome. Well, I know uh, kids, it's it's great to to know that they love the salad bar. And so they're eating fresh fruit or fresh vegetables with a fruit option. So that's great. What do you, um, what would you bake at the Timmerman kitchen? Right. We'll start with dinner rolls and kind of progress from there. But um, what we'd like to do is get to the point where we're using that bakery. We've got a lot of great, talented people that work over there, and they're excited to get back doing this as well. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, they, that was such a great thing to have buns for hamburgers or whatever baked out of our own bakery. That's That's really cool. You bet. So what is the most popular lunch item? I'd have to say it's either Crispitos or Bosco (laughs) sticks. Those are the busiest days for us, and the kids really enjoy both of those. Yes, and a lot of times you ask kids, and they'll say Crispitos. So I'm glad Bosco sticks has given it a little bit of a run for its money. Absolutely. (laughs) And you talked about how many meals are served um, per day across the district, so that's that's amazing. Is there anything else that you'd like to highlight about food service? Well, I'd just like to make sure everybody knows that everyone at food service works really hard, and they enjoy what they do. And uh, I just wanted to pass that along. It, this job's a real pleasure to work with those folks and the district's lucky to have them. They are. And there's just a lot of really hard workers behind the scenes. And it's great too that they develop those relationships with students and staff members. I agree completely. Well, David, we're very glad that you're here in our district. So thank you for coming and joining us um, on our team. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. We will end on our Emporia Public Schools mission statement. We engage, we empower, we inspire. Thank you for listening and watch for upcoming episodes.